Hey, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. You don't need that gun, boy. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. It all depends on what you want. I saw your fire. It's just, uh, just wonder what you're doing here. Is this your land? Yeah. Yeah. Name's Cartwright. This is Ponderosa land. Why'd you put down that gun, boy? <coughs> <coughs> What are you doing here? I'm fixing some beans. I'll well, tell you what, I got a, I got me a better idea. Why don't we put out this fire and uh, you come along with me back to the ranch house and I'll get you something substantial to eat. Looks like you could use it. Look, I'm just drifting through. I'm not asking for charity. Uh, I didn't realize I was offering any. No, I guess you weren't. But look, I'll just eat up what I got here and you know, I'll move on. If you're worried about the fire, don't be. I'll put it out. I wasn't worried about the fire. <coughs> you all right, boy? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, maybe you better come along with me. Huh? Well, I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. Just make sure you put out the fire before you leave. Yeah, I said I would, didn't I? <coughs> Nothing wrong with that, lad. A dozen or more square meals won't cure. You mean that's all that's wrong with him? Just ain't been eating regular? Not regular for the past couple of weeks or so, I'd say. Good thing you found him, Ben. In his condition, he might have come down with anything. But he'll be fine as long as he gets some rest and plenty of Hop Singh's good cooking. <laughs> Nothing more I can do. Have some coffee. No, thanks. I got to get back to town. Take it easy, Doc. You bet. Thanks for coming out, Doc. I don't. Night. Well, I'd better get some food for that young fellow. Oh? Well, like the doc says, it is sort of strange that a young boy like that be riding around missing meals. Well, I guess it is strange, but it happens. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't reckon he's maybe running from the law, do you? Why do you say that? Well, you said he pulled a gun on you. No, he did pull a gun, but the gun was empty. He didn't have any ammunition now. Now, I think he's just a scared kid down in his luck. But that hot soup of hop sings will do him a lot of good. What's going on? I just saw Doc Martin leave. Yeah, Paul ran into this young fella out in the North Pasture today, and standing there talking with him, the kid just collapsed. He brought him in. He's up there now. How's he doing? He's all right. Doc says a little sleep, a few square meals, and he'll be all right. Hey, you're working sort of late, ain't you, little brother? Well, I got 101 things to take care of if I'm going to leave for Placerville in the morning. All right, Joe. Hey, Bob. Everything all right? Yeah, the boss was just telling me about that boy he found. Oh, yeah. Well, he'll be fine. He's just uh, tired and hungry, you know. Uh, you got everything taken care of? Yeah, got it right here. Got the power of attorney from Sam Bates and the letter from Jim Powers. Yeah, good. Oh, listen, uh, Joe. Uh, be careful of Slim Hackett. Don't let him skin you on those horses. He's been trying to skin me for 20 years. Don't you worry, Pa. I won't let Slim take advantage of me. You taught me right. <laughs> if I'm going to leave bright and early in the morning, I better get some sleep. Yeah, as a matter of fact, little brother, you ought to get all the sleep you can, because uh, you're going to look your best for all them pretty gals you're going to meet in Placerville. Now, Hoss, how can you say a thing like that? You know the only thing on my mind is work. Sure. Yeah, well, you just make sure that most of your mind is on work. Oh, it, it will be, Pa. It will be. 
Most of it. Good night. <laughs> Any better? I feel all right. Good. Good. I hope you sit down. Enjoy your breakfast. You know, uh, I told you my name, but I guess I missed hearing yours. Wilcox. Where are you from, Billy? Arizona. Hey, what'd you do with my clothes? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid your clothes sort of fell apart just as soon as they hit the water. You know, clothes got to be washed now and then. Look, I ain't had much time for that kind of thing lately. Yeah, well, never mind. We, we rounded you up another outfit. I told you I don't want no charity. I'll pay you. You got any money, son? No, not right now. You know, a young fellow like yourself doesn't usually get into this, uh, this kind of condition. You running away from something? I ain't running. I'm just passing through here. Oh. Itchy feet, huh? That's right. You feet so itchy, Billy, that... Uh... You haven't got time to stop and sleep, bathe, wash your clothes? You, uh, you want to talk anytime. Be glad to hear your story. Mr. Cartwright? I ain't ungrateful for what you've done. About those clothes, I'll pay you. I'll work it out or, or I'll move on and uh, send you the money when I get some work. If you really want a job, you got one. But first you got to rest for a couple of two or three days and get yourself some good food in you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hoss, we uh, just had us up a new hand. Well, good. We're going to need one. Hi. My name's Hulse. Hulse Cartwright. <coughs> My name's Billy. Happy to meet you, Billy. My little brother being gone, I'm gonna need a hand. Well, don't you worry. I can do my share. Yeah. I'll bet you can, too. Look here, I brought you some clothes. If you need anything else, just give a yell, you hear? <laughs> Billy, you're weaker than I thought you was. I figured you'd have this wagon loaded by the time I got back. You know, Hoss, I was just thinking that I'm feeling strong enough that I could have gone and got the mail for you. Well, I figured no more breakfast than you ate. You wouldn't have enough energy to get all the way to the post office. Let's go home. Come on. Without getting something to eat first? Yeah, Billy, if you'd like. Sure. Well, Hoss, I think I can hold out till we get back. Go on. Yeah, we had to run the horses pretty near all the way. Uh, really? Boss was getting hungry. Oh, that burn it, that ain't so. You're getting sound more like my little brother all the time. Here's a meal, Paul. Good. <laughs> yeah, hold this. Yeah. Uh, Billy's a pretty good worker. Yeah, I got a strange boy, though. 
Well, if you think you're getting a little close to me, sir, backs off. Are you figuring on keeping him around? Yeah, I thought I would. Why? Well, the bunkhouse is full, and I thought maybe we'd move him out there so we got a place for him. Yeah. Well, I... <clears throat> Might be an idea to let him stay where he is. Keep him around the family. I don't think he's had too much of a family life. I think you're right. He really opened up to me today. Oh, yeah. I think he needed a little friendship as much as he needed food. That was, that's what was going through my mind. Well, I'll... Tom Yardley. Hell <laughs> yes. Hey, he and Jennifer are coming to Virginia City. Hi, hot dog. Yeah, the, the 10th. Hey, that's tomorrow, isn't it? That's right. From Tucson. When does the stage get in from Tucson? Noon, I think. Yeah, by golly. <laughs> hey, that, hey, I just thought of something. Little Joe's show is going to be disappointed. He's going to miss Jennifer. Well, I don't know if he's going to be disappointed. You hear what This is what Tom says. We're planning to buy some land around Virginia City and settle down around your part. Hey, wouldn't that be something? Oh, After all these years, you two end up being neighbors? <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. You know what? We're going to town tomorrow. We're going to surprise him. We're going to have a little celebration. Fine. Huh? Fine. Yeah. Hey, listen. What about, uh, what about taking Billy in? He might enjoy that. Yeah, sure, why not? Get the other things in it. Yes, sir. Hey, Billy. We're in for a real treat. One of Paul's dearest old friends is coming in tomorrow. You and me and Paul are going to go in and meet him. He's got the best-looking daughter you ever seen. Yeah, I sure hope that stage is on time. Be nice to see to old Tommy Hartley. Yeah? This is going to be nice to see him. I'll tell you, I ain't going to be all the other unhappy about seeing that daughter Jennifer here. <laughs> Where's that little girl of yours? Here I am, Uncle Ben. Oh, my goodness. It's good to see you. You got yourself a young lady here. <laughs> Jennifer, if Joseph was here, I'd insist on a wedding ceremony being performed at this very moment. Oh, Uncle Ben, quit it. You and Dad have been trying to arrange a marriage since before I was born. That's right. And if the truth were known, we hate each no, other. No, you don't. <laughs> Haas. Hi, hi, General. You know, it could be you picked the wrong son for me. That's right. That, hey, Billy, come here a minute. <laughs> Billy Wilcox, this is Mr. Yardley. Uh, hello, Billy. And this is his daughter, Jennifer. <laughs> hello, Billy. Oh, uh, Ben, uh, I'd like you to meet Sam Denton. He's been our traveling companion all the way from Tucson. This is the Ben Cartwright I've been telling you about. Mr. Denton? Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, sir. Sam here is one of those famous Texas Rangers. Oh, well, pleasure, sir. I hope uh, that what brings you to the jewel of the Comstock is pleasure and not business. I'm afraid not, Mr. Cartwright. I'm here to see your sheriff, Roy Coffey. Oh. Well, he's an old friend. His office is just down the street there. Thank you. Jennifer. Hi, Mr. Denton. Tom. Sam. Why don't we get settled into the hotel? You, you'll have weeks to talk to Uncle Ben. All right, honey. Now, hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody's going to go to any hotel. You're staying at the Ponderosa with us. Hoss, will you load up the bags, please? Now, Ben, look. Look, it's all settled. All right, Tom? Not another word of argument. Billy? Billy? Give Hoss a hand, will you? And you get it. All right, Billy, hop in. Paul, I'll stick around here and take care of everything. You guys go ahead. Uh, listen, talk to Ed Bates. Find out what delivery did he wants in that timber he ordered. I sure will. Have you always lived here, Billy? No, ma'am. I'm not from around here. I ain't thinking on staying too long. Just one second. What about the time that you were trying to press your girlfriend and you backed right into the horse trough? <laughs> I swear to this day you pushed me. I wasn't within 20 feet of you. <laughs> you two, what didn't you get into? 
And you have the nerve to complain about your own children. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Ben, you always did have it easy. Raising three boys, nothing to it. But raising a girl alone. Now, hold on there. What makes you think that raising three boys is so easy? Oh, now, come on, Paul. We never did give you no trouble. Let them complain, Haas. That's what fathers are for. That's right. Isn't that right, Billy? Uh, well, I don't, I don't rightly know, ma'am. <laughs> well, you can take my word for it. It's right about these two. You see that, Ben? No respect for her elders. <laughs> I swear if I don't get her married off. You eat. You know what doctors say. You need fat on your bone. Oh, ha have you been ill? No, ma'am. There wasn't nothing. Billy Wilcox, if you don't stop calling me ma'am, between that and my father trying to get me married off, I'm beginning to feel like a, an old maid. You ain't ever gonna be an old maid, Miss Jennifer. What a nice thing to say. Jennifer, you be careful of that Billy. I think he just might be a ladies' man. Now, Billy, don't let him embarrass you. Tom, you uh, really thinking of buying a piece of property around here? Got an appointment in town first thing in the morning. Good, good. That'll give us some time to play a little bit of chess, won't it? Hop Singh, how about bring out the chessboard? Already set up, Mr. Cartwright. Well, now, do I uh, sense a challenge? Well, unless you're uh, afraid to meet it. Afraid? Why, I beat you three straight the last time we were together. Tom, it seems to me it was just about the other way around. Well, that's the end of this evening, Haas. They'll be at it until 4 o'clock in the morning. The last time they played, they played all day and all night and all the next day. And they're still arguing who won that one. Yeah. Do you play chess, Billy? No, ma'am. Why don't you just call me Jennifer? All right. Jennifer. That's better. If you two will excuse me, I... I think I'll go to my room. Yes, ma'am. Good night, Jennifer. Good night, Hoss. Good night, Billy. Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night, Uncle Ben. Good night. What did I tell you, Billy? Hey, she's something. She's the nicest girl I ever met. You and me better get some shut-eye. We got a rough day tomorrow. Yeah, well, Hoss, you go on. I'm gonna take a little walk. Good night. Good night, Mr. Yardley. Paul. half the night looking at the stars, huh? Yeah, I just wasn't sleepy, Hoss. Well, I must say, you've done a pretty fair day's work already today. I'll tell you what, Billy. You go on back to the house and get the chores started, and I'll finish up here. Okay, whatever you say. Yoo-hoo! Hoss! Billy! Hi, gentlemen. Hi, Hoss. Hi, Billy. I'm ready to go for that ride you promised. Doggone it, Jennifer. I got all tied up here, and it's going to take me longer than I figured on. I... Oh, but, Haas, you promised. I wanted to ride over by the pond. I haven't been there in so long. Well, I, I know you was counting on Say, Haas, I'm going back that way anyhow. Why don't I ride along with you? Good idea. Would you, Billy? Well, sure, if it's okay with Haas. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Oh, thanks, Haas. I'll see you back at the house after a while. <laughs> Have a good time. I love this country, Billy. I sure appreciate you riding with me. My pleasure. Have you ever been to the pond? No, I haven't. Come on, I'll race you. You're on. Yeah. Spot 
I wanted to see. Oh, Billy, isn't it beautiful? Don't you just love it? Sure do, Jennifer. Oh, I'd like to have a place like this myself and just settle down, never move away from it. Mm, I know the feeling. Father and I have traveled so much. So have I. You know, Father thinks of me as a little girl. But people our age, like you and me, we have our dreams. Don't you think so, Billy? Yeah. Sure, we got our dreams, Jennifer. Just seems like sometimes they ain't ever gonna come true. What's your dream, Billy? Oh, a home, I think. Doesn't have to be much, of course. Just a little piece of land with a, a house on a knoll. That ain't much of a dream, is it? Oh, it's a good dream, Billy. And it will come true. What's the matter? Did I say something wrong? No. No, you could never say nothing wrong. Not to me. Just that some dreams never come true. Howdy, Mr. Denton. How are you? Fine. Here, I'll take yours. Your father home? Yes, sir. He's in the house. Thank you. You bet. Hey, Billy! Jennifer! How was the pond? Just great, Hoss. Hello, Mr. Denton! Hey, uh, Billy, you and me got work to do. Yeah. Jennifer, how'd you like to see our new coats? Sure would. You got a barn full of them. Right. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Denton, come in. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you. Well, what are you doing in these parts? Well, I'm just checking out this part of the country. Huh? Sheriff Coffey told me if I got out this way, I should drop in and say hello. Well, I'm glad you did. I sure am. Uh, just have me some coffee. Will you join me? Thank you. Uh, how do you like it, Black? Black's fine. That's good. That's a nice place you've got here. Denton, you uh, getting a line on that uh, man you've been trailing? Well, that's hard to say. I followed him all the way from San Antonio. Uh -huh. Through the Arizona Territory. And that's when I decided to take the stage and come on down here. He might head this way. Of course, with all that silver being mined around these parts, uh, drifters move in and out of Virginia City very fast. But the one I'm looking for is a young fella. About the same age and size as that uh, young Billy Wilcox out there talking to your boy, Hoss. That's him. Well, Sheriff Coffey tells me you've got a real fine family, Mr. Cartwright. He says you... Uh... <laughs> All my life I wanted to have a son. More than anything else, I never was able to have one. He tells me you've got three fine boys. You're a pretty lucky man. Yes, I've always considered myself very fortunate. I like to see that sort of thing. Family, close-knit, everybody caring for each other. That's unlike the background of the young fella that I've been trailing, this Aaron Mendoza. Oh, yes. Uh, what did this young fella do? He killed a man down in Texas. Oh, really? Different background than what your boys had, Mr. Cartwright. This young fella, he, uh, he lost his family in an Indian raid on a wagon train. There was only two survivors, an old man and a kid. That old man walked into town carrying that kid, both of them more dead than alive. And the next day, the old man died, and that left the kid alone. And uh, how'd the little fella get on? Well, it was this gal working in a local saloon. She kind of took a liking to the kid. She 
took him under her wing, mothered him, you might say, and she had this little old shack out on the edge of town. It wasn't much, but she gave that boy a roof over his head. But he had it tough, doing odd jobs, stable chores, washing the floor. But she did one decent thing for him. She gave him his name, Mendoza. That was her name. And he just thought the sun rose and set on her. How'd it happen he killed this man? One night, oh, better than a year ago it was, that kid came to the saloon to walk home with Angel Mendoza when she uh, finished work. She never liked him to come into the saloon. Go on home, will you? You know I don't like you in here. No, I think I'd rather hang around and wait for you. Hey, Angel, where are those drinks? I want you to go home. Angel, the drinks! Gosh, I'm not gonna wait around here all day long for them. It's about time. All oh, right, here. Yeah. Now drink up and get out of here. <laughs> What's the matter, Angel? You worried about your son? That is what they call him, ain't it? Aaron, he's drunk. Now do as I asked him to go home. Yeah, straight. Go on home. Your mother's busy. <laughs> Barkley, I think you better shut up. Oh, you're a big man. You want to feel important. Come on over here and wipe that up. Jack, you're drunk. Now take your friends and get out of here. Come on now. You know what she wants. She wants you to take your friends and get out of here. You talk like that, and you better start drawing on me, Stray. Aaron. Aaron, good. Drop it, kid. Leave it to the law. Marshal, he shot her. It was an accident, Marshal. If you shoot him, you'll hang. There was a trial. There was a trial. The jury acquitted him. Saloon gals come and go, Mr. Cartwright. Nobody cares very much what happens to them. And it wasn't long before everybody forgot. Everybody except the kid. And he didn't forget. Now, I didn't see this. The report was made up much later, based on accounts that came from quite a few sources. Well, that kid stayed out of sight for a while after that. People figured that he'd lit out. Hmm. The word around town was that the Barclays had threatened him, told him to get out of town. But he didn't get out of town. That's right, he didn't leave. And he and Jack Barkley tangled. The shooting took place right there in the saloon where Angel Mendoza had been working. And according to Barkley's brother, the kid came in and just opened fire. Was there anybody else there? Yeah, three or four. They were Barclay's men. They all told the same story, huh? Naturally. Mr. Denton, it might have happened in a different way, though. I mean, couldn't it? Couldn't it have been a, a fair fight? Maybe. We can only go on the findings, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Denton, everything doesn't have to be black and white. It is in my business. There are no grays, no shadows. I'm not a judge. My job is just to find him and bring him in. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm sick and tired of the job. Thanks. That's mighty fine coffee. <laughs>
any for your thoughts. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard. I just don't think my thoughts are worth a penny. You sound like you have the whole world on your shoulders. Well, I didn't mean to. I, I had a good time this afternoon. So did I. Jennifer, you know, you're so easy to talk to. I just wish everybody else was. They are, if you'll just give them a chance. Well, they are you, yeah. Billy, you know, out there by the pond today, you were telling me about your dreams. Hold on to those dreams. Well, like I said before, some of them don't come true. If you're going to be in this kind of a mood at the party tomorrow night... Party? Yes, the party that Uncle Ben's giving for Daddy and me tomorrow night. You're coming, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. You're coming, and you're going to be my escort. Well, you know, there's nothing on this earth that would make me any prouder than that, Jennifer, but... Billy, you're coming to the party, and that settles it. Agreed? Yeah, agreed. Good night, Billy. All right, I got to talk to you. Good, Benny. I was hoping you would. You know, I told you any time you were ready to talk, I was ready to listen. Well, no, I, all I wanted to tell you was that uh, after the party, I'm leaving. Oh. Any, uh, any particular reason? Yeah, I think you made a mistake about me. Did I? How's that? Well, Mr. Cartwright, when you uh, took me in, I think you felt sorry for me. You thought I was sick of drifting around and missing meals and all that. You see, that's where you were wrong, because I like that kind of life. I really miss it, and I want to get back to it. I see. You, uh, you really like the, the life of a drifter, huh? I mean, you, 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 you like to flit around from one place to another, from hither to thither to yon, not doing anything with your life, just so letting your life drift away. You really enjoy that? That's right. Hmm. Billy, what are you running from? I ain't running. I just told you I'm drifting through. I like to see what's on, uh, on the other side of the hill. Yeah, I see. And how do you, uh, how do you propose to, uh, to live while you're drifting from one side of the hill to the other? Oh, somebody always picks you up, takes care of you like you did me. That's all it's meant to. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Look, uh, Miss Cartwright, it's not that that I'm ungrateful for what you've done, because I am grateful. I'm sorry, but it's got to be this way. You're sorry. Well, Billy, you just uh, keep on running. I can't make your decisions for you. Cartwright. No, it wasn't nothing. Never mind, never mind. yourself a successful day, huh? Well, I, um, I think you might say that. Uh, you know property called the, uh, Rivers Ranch? <laughs> I know that property. I've had my eye on it for three years. Now, don't tell me that's for sale. Not now. I bought it. 
Maybe you bought the Rivers Ranch. Why, you slick, dearly son of a gun. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh, Ranch, it's a beautiful piece of property. Did you tell Jennifer yet? Uh, no, I'm uh, sort of saving it for a surprise. Oh, she'll be surprised. All right. <laughs> well, there's Sam Dunn. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Thank you. Right. I uh, saw Sam in town this afternoon and asked him to come out if he had a chance. I hope you don't mind. Well, no, of course not. Of course I don't mind. you at the party. I missed you. Well, you know, all those people inside. They're strangers. Some of our best friends were strangers once. Jennifer, do you know, I have never met anybody just like you. Nothing seems to get you down. You just take it for granted that everything in your life is gonna work out all right. Don't you, Billy? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, it can be right, if you really want it, and you work to make it so. Uh, you make it sound easy, all right, the way you talk about it. You sound just like Mr. Cartwright. What do you mean? Nothing. I sure like the stars, the way they look tonight. They're clean, pure. You're like that, Jennifer. Like the stars. What's worrying you, Billy? You know, you, you're like two people. You're sweet and kind and, and tender. And then it's as if you go into a, a dark room and close the door. Well, maybe that's what it is. I'm trying to be two people. There are no stars in a dark room, Billy. A good shindy. Oh, it was. It was. A great one. A great one. But I'll tell you, it's getting a little late for me. I think I'm going to go to bed and I'll see you. Good night. I'm hop sing. What are we having for breakfast? Hop sing the side when breakfast time come, not before. Yeah, well, very good. Good night, hop sing. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> good night, Mr. Horse. See you early tomorrow morning. Tom, how about relaxing over a cup of coffee? Hey, you know, I'm still too excited to relax. I think I'll go outside and find Jennifer and. Tell her about the ranch. She's going to be a very happy little girl when you tell her. <laughs> Jennifer? Jen? Jen, what's the matter, baby? <laughs> Nothing's the matter, and I'm not a baby! Jennifer? Jennifer! Tom, what was that all about? I'd be the last to know. I told you, be thankful you've got boys.
Billy. Don't call me Billy. What's the matter, son? I just found out you can't be two people. Nobody can. You know what she said to me? She said, I love you, Billy Wilcox. And I made a lie out of it, because I'm not Billy Wilcox. My name is Aaron Mendoza. Do you know what you're saying? I know. I know, and I want you to hear the rest of it. I killed a man in Texas. That's right, I killed a man. And I was running. I was running when you found me, because I was scared. Tell me about it, Aaron. His name was Barkley. He killed a woman. A woman who was like a mother to me. He killed her, but the jury turned him loose. And then he told me to get out of town. Well, I didn't want to leave that town, because that was a home to me, Mr. Cartwright. It's the only one I ever knew. I, I went to the saloon, and I tried to explain that to him. But he wouldn't listen. He started cussing me out. Next thing I knew, he was shooting. I was scared. I shot back. And he was lying there dead. And I ran. Sure wish you hadn't run. It was self-defense. I ran because nobody was going to believe me in that town. Nobody's going to believe me in Jack Barkley's town. Aaron, I believe you. What am I going to do? What do you think you ought to do? I know what I ought to do. I ought to go back there and face up to it. I would if anybody believed me. I've got to go back, don't I? It may not be so bad, Aaron. Mr. Denton. There have been a lot of changes made in your hometown. The Barclays aren't there anymore, and there's a judge who isn't bought and paid for. All right. I'll go back. Well, there's no hurry. The stage doesn't leave until noon tomorrow. I reckon you've got a few things you'd like to attend to around here. Why don't you just ride in and meet me in the morning? Don't worry about him, Mr. Cartwright. I'll stand by him. Thank you. You meet me at the sheriff's office, son. Good night. Can he trust me? Yeah, he doesn't think I'm going to run? No. No, neither do I. I don't think you're ever going to run again. But if you do, you'll run in the right direction. You know, Aaron, a lot of people in this world you don't have to run away from. You run to them. Do you really have to go? There's some unfinished business that I gotta take care of. But you'll be back, won't you? Sure, Jennifer, I'll be back. I still got my dream. That little house on a knoll. And I want you to help me find it. Oh, I will. I promise you I will. Grow up, Ben, don't they? 
Hmm. Right in front of your eyes. Yeah, they sure do. Boss, we've got some work to do. We gotta help our new neighbors build a ranch. 